Hello, I'm Nathan Tannenbaum with these stories from the Las Vegas Review Journal. A half dozen employees have been suspended from their jobs at University Medical Center over an incident late last month in which a woman who did not know she was pregnant was ignored in the hospital's emergency room despite what some witnesses have described as howls of extreme pain. 25-year-old Roshunda Abney delivered a premature girl at home. The baby died shortly after birth. The Review Journal's been following the case. Reporter Brian Haynes has the details of the suspensions in print and online Saturday. And Brian has another story from the hospital Saturday as well. It's about the apparent leaking of confidential private patient information. If you want to check Saturday's RJ for more on some 100 letters that UMC has apparently sent to people who may have been victims of that security leak. The 2009 session of the Nevada Legislature created a mandatory mortgage mediation program in an effort to stem the tide of home foreclosures. The Review Journal's Doug McMurdo has an update for you Saturday, including just how many default notices have gone out to Silver State homeowners in a four-month period, how many foreclosure mediation requests there have been, how many actual mediations have taken place, how many have been scheduled, and how many are in the pipeline to be scheduled. It's in Saturday's Printed Online RJ. Well, now let's uh, talk about a lot that's going on in Sunday's Review Journal, including a detailed look at what's known as the third straw. Out at Lake Mead, reporter Henry Breen literally goes in depth. We're talking about like 60 stories underground, some 600 feet. That's where construction crews are digging to make sure water keeps flowing to Las Vegas. 90% of the valley's water supply, the drinking water supply, comes from Lake Mead. So right now, um, we have the two intakes, intake one and intake two. So 90% of the water is flowing through those two intakes. And we just, we keep, continue to see the lake decline. And, you know, as soon as it hits 1050, elevation 1050, we would lose intake one. That would really reduce our capacity approximately half. The structure is uh, about 50 foot squared, 50 by 60 foot, something like that, on its base. So it's a big hole. We'll ride a cage down the shaft, 600 feet down, and we're down there drilling and grouting right now to cut off the groundwater. So the new intake is positioned at 860, 860 feet, and um, the pumping level will still be at 1,000. So. Um, should the lake continue to decline below 1,000, um, we would need to make some additional modifications to the pumping stations. The entire video from the Review Journal's Justin Yerkinen is online right now with the article in print and online Sunday. All right, admit it. When there's nothing else on TV, sometimes even when your favorite show's in a commercial break, you click up and down stopping once in a while on cable channel 2 from the city of Las Vegas. Sometimes Cable Channel 4, that's Clark County's channel. Well, a couple of Review, review Journal reporters looked into both operations with an ear to some taxpayer concerns that their hard-earned money might be going to pay for local government efforts to make those local governments look good. The number in the studio is 229-5320. The role of the TV station is really to help create a dialogue between the public and the city. Well, this is the studio for KCLV uh, TV, Channel 2. Uh, we're the city's government access channel. Uh, we provide uh, government programming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we're funded solely through franchise fees. A lot of people think that the operation is funded through the city's general fund, but it's not. All of videographer Jason Bean's video about KCLV is online right now at the Review Journal's multimedia pages with reporter Alan Choate's look at Channel 2 and Scott Weiland's report on Channel 4, both in print and online Sunday. Your sports, we've got you covered with the Run and Rebel basketball game Saturday night against K-State at the Orleans Arena. Got a pregame look at the nation's 18th ranked team going into the contest Saturday, then Sunday, all your postgame coverage, including an online photo slideshow. Weather, two words, more rain. We invite you to follow along as conditions and forecasts change along with satellite and radar pictures at our all-in-one spot, lbrj.com slash weather. As always, for breaking news, 24-7. You're already here. ReviewJournal.com.